My name is Jeff Morgan. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Unilateral divorce eliminates the right of defense. Now, the right to defend yourself is something that we as Americans hold very dear. If I get a ticket for speeding, I may contest the ticket. If I get a ticket, and fortunately those red light cameras are gone right now, but if I get a ticket in the past, for, for example, running a red light, and I get a little thing in the mail that says the camera caught you on uh, such and such a date at such and such a place, um, and you are now being fined, well, I have the right to appeal that. If somebody accuses me of uh, stealing something, uh, I have a right to defend myself. If somebody accuses me of murdering somebody or raping something, whatever the case may be, I have a right to defend myself. I'm going to assume in this case that I'm innocent and that somebody is trying to falsely charge me with a crime. I have a right and a duty to defend myself. I have a right of self-defense. In the situation of unilateral no-fault divorce, that right has been eliminated. I have no right to defend myself. In the Texas Family Code, section 6.001 in supportability, the Texas Family Code says that on the allegation of any spouse, either spouse, either one, the husband, the wife, whatever it may be, um, they can put forth a claim of insupportability and the judge may grant the divorce. Now in the state of Texas, this judge always grants a divorce. But the interesting thing about this is that if you are a criminal, you have a right of defense. If you are the respondent to the petitioner who is petitioning for divorce, you have no right of defense. Why is it that criminals have a right of defense, but yet in the situation like marriage, you have no right to defend yourself? And the thing that you should be defending yourself against is a legal infraction. If somebody accuses me again of stealing or committing some type of criminal act, I can have somebody to defend me and they can say, hey, look at the camera. That is not him. Are there any, is there any DNA evidence? He did not do it. There are no fingerprints, nobody saw him. Furthermore, there are other people who witnessed that he was at this event that was five miles away from this. He did not commit the crime. So I get to defend myself. Others are allowed to present testimony and say, he did not do it, I was with him. In the case of unilateral no-fault divorce, you do not get a right of defense. But the thing about unilateral no-fault divorce is that you, have not also, you also have not committed a legal infraction. So because your spouse, whether it be a husband or a wife, wants to leave a marriage, why should that bother you? Why should I be subject to the court coming in and ordering the dissolution of my marriage? Why should a judge be able to come in and say, Mr. Morgan or Mrs. Morgan, whoever, the case, whoever it may be, I am ordering the dissolution of your marriage. But judge, what did I do? It does not make a difference what you did. There was no legal infraction on your part. But nevertheless, because your spouse has claimed insupportability and has essentially filed a petition that says your marriage is insupportable and that it will not be able to achieve the desired ends of the marital relationship, I am going to grant a divorce. This is tyranny. It is judicial tyranny. And actually, it isn't even judicial tyranny because it is not judicial at all. The judiciary acts if there is a case of a legal infraction. If a spouse has not committed any legal infraction, why is the judge taking an action that will destroy that person? That person is married, and the judge is ordering that person's legal status to be changed to divorced or single. That is what's happening. That person is married, has been working for his or her family, and the judge can come in, even though there's been no legal infraction, uh, no series of legal infraction, not even a single legal infraction, and the judge can say, I'm sorry, Mr. Morgan or Mrs. Morgan, you will now be kicked out of your house. You will now have your children only half time. You, by the way, will have to pay money to your spouse, your husband or your wife in the form of alimony and child support. You have done nothing wrong, but the judge will say, um, I am ordering the dissolution of your marriage based on the petition of one spouse. Now again, this is tyranny. This is complete judicial abuse. It's not even judicial, it's just complete tyrannical abuse by our family law system. And by the way, this is what is codified in the Texas Family Code. Section 6.001 says that divorce on the grounds of insupportability, you don't need any evidence. All you need is a petition asking for the marriage to be dissolved and the judge may, the reality is in the state of Texas, the judge always, without exception, 100%, grants a divorce. Something is wrong with this system. 
So what unilateral divorce does, and especially the section in the Texas Family Code 6.001, it grants an individual an exclusive privilege and it, uh, and it grants him or her the immunity to procure a divorce without legal challenge. So if I want to divorce my wife and I say I'm going to divorce you, um, she has no, there's nothing she can do to stop me from doing so. This is kind of like in the Islamic culture that they say, well, uh, in, in an Islamic culture, a man can say, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, and the wife is divorced. Well, in the state of Texas, you don't have to say it three times. <laughs> you only have to say it once. And by the way, it does not have to be just the man doing it to the woman. The woman can do it to the man. And uh, a person, again, can be found without... Um, can lose his or her house, can often have protective orders or temporary orders put upon him, can be, um, can just have his entire, his life or her entire life completely upended. Again, there is no legal infraction. This should be a serious concern to people. If you steal something, if you're a thief, maybe you should go to jail. Maybe you should pay somebody back. If you are found intoxicated and driving while intoxicated, Again, there are punishments for that. If you are shooting uh, some type of drugs or passing it out, if you are um, involved in some type of sexual um, abuse of some sort or domestic abuse or whatever the case may be, there are punishments that should be meted out. But when you do nothing, when the judge basically is going to say, I'm gonna throw you into jail. Well, what, what are you throwing me into jail for? Well, I'm not throwing you in for anything, but because your neighbor thinks you should go into jail. Well, that's fine, whatever my neighbor thinks, but you have to have a reason to throw me into jail. Oh, no, 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 says the judge. I can do whatever I want to because the judge says he thinks I should throw you in jail. And the judge, this, and, and your spouse says, I think I should give her a divorce or you a divorce. And therefore, the judge says, I'm going to honor the spouse. The judge is not acting on any legal precedent whatsoever. And for the respondent to this charge, there is absolutely no defense, period. The best they can hope for is, well, we can get a good settlement, a good split. Maybe I'll get more than 50-50. But the entire action itself is unjust, it's illegal, it's tyrannical. This is what we have in the state of Texas. Divorce at will. Divorce can be forced upon a person and there is no recourse. Unilateral divorce eliminates the right of defense. Therefore, again, uh, as I've said in the past, unilateral divorce not only is unconstitutional, but unilateral divorce creates a tyranny of the family court judge. And the thing with the family court judge and the whole family court system is that the tyranny does not end when a divorce is is executed. Even if it's executed against my will or against my wife's will, the execution of the divorce does not end the tyranny because it continues on. There are modifications, there are fights for children, there are fights for property. And of course the vultures called the family law attorneys and the divorce attorneys will come in there and they will tell you how they can fight for you and help you win your case. Well, number one, they're lying because you can't win if you're the respondent in a no-fault divorce. You're always going to lose. They can tell you, well, we're gonna fight for you and get you this and get you that. But the reality is they are looking out for their own interests. They are looking out for their financial gain. They will financially rape you and plunder you while pretending to be helping you out in this situation. And they will tell you, well, this is what we can do for you. This is great for you. These divorce attorneys will not tell you that the, that the action of unilateral no-fault divorce in itself is unconstitutional, it's immoral, it's unjust, and it's tyrannical. So a person with no legal breach, no legal infraction, no legal liability, nothing that he's done can lose almost everything. Half of hers or her assets or more, future income, can have uh, passports taken away if there's child support and they say, well, we, we, this person might be a flight risk right now. This is completely tyrannical and this is what is happening today in the state of Texas. Now, some people have objected and said, but you know, if a person does not want to stay married, it would be tyrannical of the judge to make him or her stay married. Okay, fine, let's take that line of argument. How about this? The judge can give that person a divorce, but he or she gets no goodies. He or she does not get to plunder the marital 
assets. He or she does not get to take the children. He or she does not get to take the alimony. He or she does not get to saddle you with the debts of the marriage. How about this? You want to leave the marriage? Fine, you can do so. If, if it's so insupportable as you say, if, if the marriage is broken down, um, you can leave. But you get no alimony. You get no child support. You do not have primary custody of the children. You lose the house. The marital assets remain with the person who wants to stay married. That would be a little bit more equal, just, fair. And now, how can we say this? Because fairness is 50-50. No, fairness is when you take an action and you base the, your results, your judgment upon the action. When one person decides that he or she wants to leave a marriage, he or she does not get to plunder the house. I mean, imagine this. Suppose I saw my neighbor and my neighbor had a very nice car and very nice things throughout his house and I stole from that neighbor's house and they caught me. You know, okay, you're right, I have it. And the judge said, well, in order to be fair about this, give him back 50% of what you stole. Well, I would be stealing all over the place throughout my neighborhood because I could get a whole lot of goodies for free. I mean, if that's all I had to do was to go and steal and then get back 50%. And yet in the case of marriage, a person is allowed to leave a marriage, break the marriage vows and the covenant, the contract that they've had, the marital relationship, destroy the family, and then also say, but I need to be compensated. And the really horrific part about this is that in mo the majority of instances, the state sides with the victimizer against the victim. The person who is trying to fight for his or her marriage has absolutely no defense and also gets things taken away. And the state tells that person, now you need to be a good father or you need to be a good mother and you should not be upset about this and you should not argue about this and you need to learn to control your emotions. The state has put these laws into effect that cause this injustice and then they try to lecture us about how we need to be kind and fair. The state is responsible for some of the most tyrannical statutes in the state of Texas that are contained in the fam Texas Family Code. And the state knows, the governor knows, the attorney general knows, our representatives know, our senators know, the speaker of the house knows, the judges know, the family attorneys know too. But they're not gonna say too much because they profit off of this stuff. They know that you will be plundered. Now, the Texas uh, family law and some of these attorneys have said, well, we have this um, alternate dispute resolution and we really love this so you guys can get together and you can resolve this peacefully without having to get us involved and having us taking all of your money and stuff like that. The reality remains. I am drugged into a situation against my will. If I'm fighting for my marriage and the other person wants to leave, let her leave and she gets nothing. This was a situation that actually happened recently in the United Kingdom where Teeny Owens, Teeny Owens wanted a divorce and her husband said, I do not want to be divorced. And Teeny Owens was very upset because she wanted a divorce. She wasn't living with her husband and she wants a divorce. And her husband says, listen, I am very content. Um, I do not want a divorce. Well, Teeny Owens was not living with her husband anyway. What Teeny Owens wanted was the goodies. Teeny Owens wanted Mr. Owens stuff because Mr. Owens was a fairly wealthy person and Teeny Owens was really upset and the public was trying to shame him. Mr. Owens, you're just being so bitter and rude and mean and everything like that. You need to let your wife go. She can go. He was just saying, well, if she wants to go, I guess she can go, but she doesn't get to take all the goodies. In the state of Texas, the person who leaves gets the goodies. That's the way it is. You want to incentivize divorce, that's the way you do it. If you want to reduce divorce, what you do is you take away the incentives. So this is something that our state legislature uh, failed on against this past session. They had the opportunity to get rid of unilateral no-fault divorce and they whiffed, they swung and they missed. It didn't even come up for a vote. If our legislators really want to address this issue, they would look at this tyrannical problem that we have in the state of Texas. In fact, I would go so far as to say Governor Abbott, who also was the former Attorney General for the state, he knows the system very well. I think you should call for an emergency session. Fix this problem. Unilateral no-fault divorce actually was originated in the 20th century in Bolshevik Russia by Vladimir Lenin. Vladimir Lenin imposed unilateral no-fault divorce upon Bolshevik Russia in order to destroy the family so that he could try to impose communism on Bolshevik Russia. 
for all intents and purposes, that is the divorce doctrine that we have in the state of Texas. If I were the governor, I would be calling an emergency session to repeal these unjust unilateral divorce laws. And I hope that Governor Abbott sees this video and I hope that he takes this to heart. There is no way that any governor in any state, and especially a governor who claims to be for freedom and everything else and pro-family and stuff like that, should allow these laws to exist in the state of Texas. They are tyrannical, they are immoral, they are unjust. I'm calling on Governor Greg Abbott to use his powers of persuasion as governor to do what is right and get rid of this Bolshevik law, this Leninistic law in the state of Texas to purge it from this state forever. Thank you.